the worst mistake you made. Empty gun rack. There are only slight differences between a passion project and obsession, narcissism, and ego. In some cases, that wholehearted belief is enough to carry a franchise by sheer willpower. In the case of Chronicles of Riddick, each idea led into the next, until somehow, almost 25 years after its release, the franchise is still alive. Before things get too far, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date on all our latest videos. Released in 2000, Pitch Black was directed by David Toohey from a script he co-wrote with brothers Ken and Jim Wheat. While Toohey had worked steadily as a writer, his experience as a director was fairly limited, but that inexperience forced Tui to create a script that would work within the confines of a small budget while still wringing every bit of suspense he could manage. The plot was classic spinner rack sci-fi. A spaceship carrying a dangerous prisoner and his captor crashes on a mystery-riddled alien planet whose most terrifying aspect happens to be the prisoner's greatest strength. They're pitted against a horde of nocturnal creatures. While our criminal has had a black market surgery, that lets him see in the dark. You pay him 20 menthol cools to do a surgical shine job on your eyeballs. So he can see who's sneaking up on you in the dark? Exactly. At least that's what we're told in the first movie but we'll get to that a little bit later. For this movie, it's a pretty wonderful bit of character exposition that he's augmented himself in order to be more efficient at his chosen profession, crime. We're not told much about our anti-hero. It's mostly warnings on behalf of Riddick's captor, William Johns, played by Cole Hauser, a mercenary posing as an intergalactic lawman. There is something so undeniably charming in Diesel's betrayal and that almost wasn't the case. As the story was initially being developed, Steven Seagal was considered for a role with director Tui, outright refusing to work with the notoriously difficult actor. He admitted that Diesel didn't give the best audition, but he saw something there. While mostly known for a supporting role in Saving Private Ryan, Diesel's dedication to the role of Riddick is infectious. Riddick is a murderer and thief in the vein of Snake Plissken. Call me Snake from Escape from New York. In the same way Kurt Russell elevated Snake, Diesel makes our begrudging anti-hero someone we cheer for. Even after the movie's success of over $53 million, more than double its initial budget, it wasn't until the release of Fast and Furious in 2001 that Diesel became a household name. On the back of that movie's success, Chronicles of Riddick was greenlit. Armed with a $120 million budget, David Toohey returned as director and maintained sole screenwriter credit. Naming the movie after the breakout character immediately established the idea that the creators planned to give us more of what we wanted, or at least what they thought we wanted. Give me your soul. While the initial script for Pitch Black focused on an ensemble cast, Tui and Diesel saw Riddick as the breakout character. There is a reverence and worship of Riddick all over Chronicles. Instead of the tight survival horror of Pitch Black, we now have a sort of intergalactic epic fantasy. We're introduced to the Necromongers, a space cult who worships death and annihilation, steadfast on wiping out entire planets. We're also now told that Riddick is one of the last remaining Furians, a race of mythic warriors from the planet Furia. Do you remember your home world? Where it was? Have you met any others? Others like yourself. Sister, they don't know what to do with just one of me. It's clear from the onset here that Tui and Diesel have plans that were just not established in the character's initial outing. It seems like they intended Chronicles to be the start of their Lord of the Rings with Pitch Black being the Hobbit-esque introduction to the world. The disconnect here is that the Hobbit was an introduction to the world of Middle-earth, whereas nothing was ever intended beyond Pitch Black. Instead of the thoughtfulness of a planned, grand story, Tui and Diesel used Chronicles to retcon the character and remold him into a space Conan. Whereas we had Riddick make the conscious decision to have a surgery on his eyes in Pitch Black, Chronicles tells us that this is a trait of all Furians, part of their natural evolution as efficient warriors. While you could make the argument Riddick lied about the surgery to hide his Furian lineage, it completely undercuts one of the character's core ideals, his dedication to a life he chose. But the lean choices of a criminal aren't of interest to Diesel and Tui. In Chronicles of Riddick, the two are bound and determined to make Riddick a savior, not just a reluctant savior of a crashed ship's crew, but the entire universe. Where does he come from? Who are his people? These are the things I need to know. And it just wasn't what the audience wanted. Only grossing about 110 million, it was a financial failure panned by critics. 
But with complete disregard to the movie's performance, Diesel and Tui were dead set on continuing the franchise. As the Fast and Furious franchise continued to make money hand over fist, Diesel leveraged his role to gain the rights to Riddick from Universal. Agreeing to cameo in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, he waived his fee in exchange for the rights. Diesel and Tui would try to tap back into what made Pitch Black work with 2013's Riddick. Our main character has distanced himself from the title of commander of the Necromongers and is, again, hunted by both alien creatures and mercenaries. A lot of the movie feels overly dialed in, a sharp course correction that is more jarring than comforting. Everything feels a little hollow, even if we know how much Diesel believes in the project. When the money dried up, he put his own home on mortgage until the bank's loans went through. And while that's admirable, there just isn't enough of a backbone to rest these hopes upon. As the franchise carried on, simplicity was shoved aside in favor of establishing a universe. Diesel's entire career is made largely of his own fandom. From the 2015 The Last Witch Hunter, based on the actor's actual Dungeons & Dragons character, to the way he obsessively wants to build a universe around what was his breakout role. On one hand, it's beautiful to see someone love something as much as Vin Diesel loves wearing tank tops and goggles. On the other hand, it's frustrating when we know that ideal universe in his mind is not what we loved about the first film. Now what are you going to do to get that cred back? What's a big play? Something splashy. The closest they have come so far is not 2013's Riddick, but maybe 2004's Chronicles of Riddick Dark Fury. Directed by the legendary creator of Aeon Flux, Peter Chung, the 30-minute animated movie was intended to bridge the gap between Pitch Black and Chronicles of Riddick. Written by television writer Brett Matthews from a story by Tui, Dark Fury hammers home what we loved about Riddick, a reluctant hero working against all odds opposed by wild villains and over-the-top circumstances. The pure, fun, B-movie schlock is in full force without falling under the weight of its wild universe expanding once. Diesel has stated that there is at least one more Riddick movie in route, so far titled Riddick 4 Furia. Riddick is a strange outlier in Hollywood in that it's a franchise kept alive by hubris alone. Diesel and Tui want this character to be a pop culture icon, in the same vein of Snake Plissken or Evil Dead's Ash. Groovy. But post the original film, something that could very easily be chalked up to the right movie at the right time, everything has fallen flat. Part of that may be its idea that Riddick isn't merely a charming anti-hero, but some sort of trope-ridden chosen one. Or it could just be buying into a hype that isn't really there. There's an idea in art that you often do one for them and one for you. More often, the pet project is a small human piece. In the case of Riddick, Diesel's one for them is the money-making, finely-tuned engine of Fast and Furious. Whereas the one for him is unfortunately three for him and wrapped around his obsession with building a world nobody but he and Tui really want. Whatever the general opinion on Riddick may be, Diesel is content to build worlds and mythos around a secondary character from a small-budget B-movie from almost a quarter century ago. For Diesel, he's pushed a character along through determination, bartering, and undeniable enthusiasm. And really, that's lovely. So what do you think? Are you excited for Furia? Let us know down in the comments below, and while you're here, why not check out either of the thumbnails that just popped up?